Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. It's an unusual Friday morning, and it's wonderful to have you with us. By the way, thank you right from the top here for being such a great family of listeners and supporters. Your financial gifts keep us streaming programs just like this, the Subiquitous Podcast, and also Couch to Kitchen concert series on Facebook and YouTube. And there are several ways you can become patrons of this ministry. One is by becoming a patron on Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Sue Duffield. Patreon dot com slash Sue Duffield. And also by getting on Sue Duffield dot com, there's a connect and donate button right on the main page. Or also by using PayPal. And you can do that by doing paypal.me dot Sue Duffield. So many ways to keep this ministry rolling. Also, our mailing address is Post Office Box 2172 Hendersonville, Tennessee 37077. That's P.O. Box 2172 Hendersonville, Tennessee 37077. Today's title is Just How Sweet is Jesus? Well, this is episode number 81, Jeff Duffield. Can you believe it? No, (laughs) no, that is, no, that's kind of staggering just in and of itself. And I I thought would be kind of fun today. I have a great little devotion called The Sweetness of Christ, but we're going to talk about that later. But before we get to that, Just How Sweet is Jesus is is a great thing to think about because a lot of people think in the world that Jesus is only sweet. But there are some interesting things. He's not only the Lamb of God, he's also the Lion of Judah. This is true. So we want to talk a little bit about that, like I said, later. But in the meantime, Jeff Duffield has a major, major problem. I have several, but I'm not sure exactly where you're going. Well, I'm just going to say you have a major problem, and it is called Sweet Tooth. Yeah, I think I've tamed it a little bit in recent years. Right, you have tamed it, but I, th- I think so, <laughs> to a degree. But yes, it, no, it, it's a uh, it's both of our problems. Truthfully, it's never yeah. And it's, then we raise a son mm-hmm. who sweetness things or sweet things are not nearly as important to him as Annie and you and I. Um, yeah, he says that. Although I did see that nine thousand pound box of Freilinger uh, saltwater yeah, taffy. He, yeah, he has that up he there. offered to me last night. His, that, I had one piece. I did, too. I only had one. That was Just all we one. needed. one. That's yeah. all. But, yeah, exactly. And he's already <laughs> showed me the sections he's gone through. So. It was a gift from Uncle Dave to both our kids in, in Tennessee and also to our kids here in Delaware. The, the Saltwater Taffy collaboration of, I think it's I think it's a 10-pound box. I it's think something it is. like oh, my that. Word. It, it's it, like, really? Yeah. It's overload. I, don't, I can't even tell you how many fillings i lost out of my teeth in my head over the years by eating saltwater taffy yeah I've, it just rips a crown right out of your head yeah yeah it yeah i i'm very cautious these days when i eat a piece <laughs> um i do not chew hard I, I try not to get it you know yeah just it's easier maybe to just to just to suck on it just don't get your well you know we're probably doing more information than we no, need I, there I know, for that know, but just but, let's just say but we're i know careful. that there are people out there that love yes. the jersey shore and they love saltwater taffy right and all things in moderation in moderation yes, yes oh boy is that a key okay so another sweet delectable demise of our our lives is damasks candy in Mullica Hill, New Jersey. Yeah, oh, good they, grief. For I've said for many years that should be outlawed. It it, it really is. And it's, every yeah. yeah, every year, you know, they're over almost I think ninety years now. Ninety years right. um as a as a candy store. Ain't right. Right off of the exit for Mullica Hill well, on two ninety five. They got enough business. You don't need to give it out where it no, is. No, actually, you have to call now to to secure right. if you really want candy in time for Christmas or right. Easter. Right. Uh, you have to call ahead. And they do Easter and 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 I guess 
you know, you know more about it. It's more of a family tradition. It is tradition a family tradition. You, it goes on your back. your side. Really, it goes back to my great grandmother, Grammy Allen, as right. we called her, Alice Allen. Actually, as a kid, she used to help deliver sugar there. Wow. So, um, so you go, they, they make Easter candy. They make Easter candy. Course. They They make Valentine. They make candy all year long, except. Well, do they do Valentine? Because I'm told yeah, that no, once no. Christmas ends, no, no. they vamoose no, down once, to Florida. Yeah, they, they do. But then they come back for Easter. Well, and, that wouldn't and be Valentine's. Valentine's. Whatever. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know their personal business. Well, I, I just. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, no. you've told me about when they're closed. Oh, they, they, they close, know. yeah. In the summertime, you can't find them open. Okay. And that that is logical. Think about it. Which, they do, which speaks to how much money they make. I mean, well, we're not going to talk about selling that. cavities. Oh, I mean, but the our candy. favorite. You know, the the actually the family favorite yes. for years, and was, I've never heard of them until I met you. No, are the dark chocolate peanut cream clusters yes. from Damask's D A M A S K S. We're there doing a little again. little this promo for them. <laughs> free advertising. Nope, we're not getting a kickback. We're not even getting a no, free box no. of, of damasks over this. No, we're getting nothing. But no. you can get online, from what I understand now. They've become, you know, the, wow. the generations now, you can order it online. Oh, wow. I know, it's crazy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, modernization. But the, also another thing that's really good are the milk chocolate covered oyster crackers. Oh, my Lord. That's a big seller, too. I don't think I've ever had any no, of I, I, I don't think I want you to have those. Yeah, it's because probably, it's yeah. Probably. I, like I say, <laughs> covering many other, like, southern sweet tea. No. Uh, yeah. That's another vice. But what I say, I don't need more vices no. in my life. And I have more than enough to carry me through, so I'm just going to stick with the ones I have. That's right. So if people want to introduce me to... <laughs> Stuff like this. I say nay, nay. See, that's why we always said uh, cigarettes and alcohol has never been a problem. We don't, it's not even something no. in, in our brains or minds or even no. tasted. No, and that's why I've never ventured forth because but I know the addiction sugar properties. sugar is another yeah. problem. Right, right. <laughs> and so, and it is an, an unfortunate, it is a. It is a, an epidemic around the world. We and, know that. And sugar, as we well know, more so than ever today, is is just as bad for you as the aforementioned well, we, we, other vices. Oh, there's no doubt. Well, yeah. but that's that's not going to help us in this podcast it's right not, now. It's not, but, but this, is where you went, this is where it went. Well, I so. want to talk about some of our favorite Christmas things, okay. right? Okay, so okay. we did already talk about Damas. We already made that trip. We've come full circle there. And yeah. there was a time where it used to be $1.95 a pound. Well, your gasoline. $1.95 Yeah, but gasoline used to be pound. 30 cents a gallon. So now they're twenty dollars a pound, and but it's worth it, isn't it? Oh, is it worth it? Again, in moderation. In moderation. <laughs> so another little stop that we used to do, not at Christmas time, at least my family didn't, but maybe yours did, uh, was Weber's Candy. Mm -hmm. uh, in was it on Pearl Street? In uh, no, it wasn't Pearl Street. Um, um, oh gosh, was you're, it Pearl Street you're in Bridgeton? Me on the spot. It well, was anyway, a, it was in Bridgeton. It was in Bridgeton. I don't think it was Pearl we Street. We would go there for our Easter candy, and they used to have the best peanut butter chocolate eggs ever in the world. We were not um, a family that went out and bought a ton of candy at Christmas, right? Now, Easter, of course, you did the typical thing, but we never went to the specialty shops. We don't bother <laughs> working in a grocery store, just grab the stuff and think, oh, know. that's good enough, put it in the basket. I, I, and you're right, it could have been the crane side of my family and then also Alice Allen, where they appreciated homemade. There is a difference. Homemade. Yeah. Or, or business, private business made. They weren't into all of the big, you know. Um, just buy the thing on the grocery shelf. They they liked going to the smaller, as we called it, what is it, small Saturday could, shopping, right. small business. You could shop. call it a boutique candy shop. Oh, nice word. You're yeah. so good. Well, you know. So Weber's was a was a favorite, though, later. It was. It was. And, and there was gone. also, let's give uh, full mention, or, you know, full whatever, to another establishment in Bridgeton back in the day that was Bodine's. Oh, Bodine's candy shop. candy shop. We happen to know some descendants of that yes, family. Yes, we do. 
And they were another one. And they're no longer we, around no, either. No, we did purchase, uh, as a matter of fact, when we would do that sort of thing, my mother, being a Bridgeton native, preferred Bodines over Weber's. Oh. Don't ask me why. Okay. But she, And then as our children came along, as you remember, she started buying those peanut butter eggs yes. at Easter time. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they were awful. I mean, they were wonderful. Yeah. Okay, so another sweetness of, of, the, of the season for Jeff Duffield, and they are so difficult to find, is the Chocolate. Archway Cherry oh. Chip Cookies. Archway yeah. Cherry Chip Cookies. I think we, Jesus has done me a favor. Well, they came back last year. Yeah. And I even contacted archwaycookies.com yeah. and I asked know. them, where in the world are the cherry chip cookies? Not to be had. And they're nowhere to be found. No. Nope. Your and grandmother started that. I know. Now, did you eat those things before I came around? No. I don't so, think so. So she bought those for me back in the early days, well, as and, it were. Yeah, and in the Acme as store. A of course, Acme always had their specialty Archway Christmas cookies. Yeah. And one year, I think it was, it had to be, I'm, I could get online and find out, but one year they came out with, they have the, the wedding cookies, which were beautiful. They're good. Mm -hmm. But these cherry chip things, yeah. man, I am telling you, I don't remember my grandmother buying them mm -hmm. other than buying them for you mm -hmm. as a gift because they were, they were pricey. The yeah. Pepperidge Farm and Archway cookies, yeah. the Christmas cookies, back in the day when, you know, my grandparents well, still were making 30 bucks a week, right? Yeah, they still are pricey. It's just but I remember her price. spending like a dollar nine for for a, a package of those, and that was a big deal. And that let, was a big deal. Let me say those packages in those days were, well, there were larger more of, <laughs> and had more inside right. of them than they do today. That's right. There were yeah. more of them. There's yeah. no doubt. So anyway, do you remember as a kid, do, did you remember as a kid getting uh, candy canes in Sunday school? Did oh, you get it? Oh, yes, certainly. And we had those uh, rectangular shaped candy boxes and we, they would be given out on Sunday evening after the church children's the children's program christmas program and can you can were when you, you had to as a child you had to get up dressed up by my dad dressed up to the night there was no right? dressing down no, in those days no. you had to get a suit and tie on as a five-year-old <laughs> and you had a piece a piece to speak that's right that was that's what we called them they were a piece right and it normally was a scripture verse relating to the christmas season and you right. had to memorize right. it and then you had to get up in front of three hundred people and recite it. Right. The these are these are traumatic days that still resonate with me well, the, as a sixty six year old. And the Christmas memory that I have with that is that let's face it, that was a big deal for you and I. Even our church, we had that. That was a big deal. And then to get either that little box of candy, yes. or we now here is what we did, and you know our pastor's wife, who was very affluent. Uh, at the time, she was affluent coming into the ministry. They were bivocational. She also had, um, you know, a lot of money. Let's just say that much. And she would go and order the small boxes of damask candies, mm. uh, the small little, like a little. Here's that damask it, word. Yeah, again. a little six ounce box or whatever it was. And that was our gift. Right. And then later on, then each family got a big box of the pound. And that's really where it's all it all started. But then for you me. also had the candy canes and candy canes. Yeah. So it's a wonder we're just sweet uh -huh. addicts. <laughs> uh huh. I don't think we're alone in that. No, problem. we're not. Alone. And I don't I think that. so. There was a place too that our friends uh, Rich and Tammy Stevens out there near oh, Warren, yeah, Ohio. There's yeah. a place called Daffins. Yeah, that's not that good. is is uh, not good either. That's no. another not good stop. Right. Great right. milk chocolate. Some of the best milk chocolate I've ever had ever. Yeah. Really good stuff. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And I'm that, thinking, you know, everybody that's listening right now, you probably have your favorite candy store, and you know, send us a message or send us a, a comment or whatever you can do on on our website, and let me know what your favorite Christmas candy is. I would and then next time we're on the road, if we're in your area, we'll go and we'll go buy some. Oh yeah, because that's all we need to do is buy more candy. Yeah, our our dental bills are not high enough as right. it is, and it's not candy. But there's another favorite tradition of sweetness in our family, and that is me getting up every oh, Christmas morning, Lord. 
word. And making cinnamon rolls. Yes. The cinnamon roll is not necessarily uh, an elaborate yeast kind. I make That's it what you straight say. from brisk from brisket. Brisket. <laughs> I make it. From, I meant to say bisquick, <laughs> and brisket came out. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> We don't make it we from don't brisket. Put it, no. We don't put it on the grill, do we? No, we don't. No, no. Okay. It's made from bisquick. It's a very simple simple recipe. Just a couple of, uh, of two cups of bisquick and about a half cup of milk. And you, and you mix that all together to make a nice dough. And then you flatten it out with, with my 100-year-old rolling pin that I have for my great-great-grandmother. You still have that? Oh, yeah. Okay. And it's worth some money. Did you know that? You told me that. Yeah, it's made out of some sort of... Uh, Special wood. Special right. walnut wood or something. Yeah, it still looks pretty it good for yeah. its age. Yeah, And it's over 100 years old, and I have to use it yep. because I'm making my great-grandmother's recipe. I have to, right? Is, it, is that your great-grandmother? Well, she used to make it with yeast rolls, but, but then my grandmother, Hilda, decided, ah, forget the yeast thing. We're going to just do bisquick. <laughs> so <laughs> she, got, she changed that. She was that. more practical. Yeah, you roll it out, and then you throw some butter on it, and then some cinnamon and sugar, and then you roll it, and you cut it, and you put it in a pan, and you bake it for about 15, 20 minutes. And there you and go. And there you go. And Speaking of which, uh -oh. our son, who denies sweetness like ability, will clean out a pan of oh. those if you turn your back on him. I'm half afraid. We're actually here right now, present in his home. Yes. And I have a feeling when we return on Monday, yes, yes we're going to have yes. a little Christmas celebration. I'm already doing the turkey. I can't wait. It's, I have cinnamon a feeling, rolls are probably going to Once you get that turkey going in the <laughs> oven, I have a feeling you're going to be having to do something else, too. You made some four Decembers ago when Annie got married, and you had a dish of it there. Oh, yeah, when everybody was in town for this and Christmas the day wedding. Of the, yeah, and the yeah. day of the wedding... He and I came back to our house. You and, and Annie and everyone else were last-minute preparations for the ceremony. You had right. a couple hours later. And we came back to the house, and there were still a few of those uh, uh, biscuits, if you will, whatever, <laughs> laying there. They were there. I also uh, Not I, long. No, not but long. I also forgot to tell you, I also put a frosting on it, too. Yes. like a, And all it is is just, just powdered sugar, and that was a family milk, tradition. and a little bit of vanilla. That was yeah. a family tradition that... Almost died oh. out with your grandma. Oh, we almost died? Is no, no. no oh. Well, yeah, but the, no, we, it almost died out when your grandmother when passed When she died, on. my mother said, I'm not doing it. Right. And then it went, we went quite a few, uh, I don't know how long we went, yeah. but several years there. Right. Where we didn't have them. No, and I decided. And you got in a, uh, well, you got in a, a mode one, yeah. sun, one Christmas and you, or Thanksgiving. You used to do a Thanksgiving and Christmas. Well, I did this year. You did. I did again. And you started making them, and I know. there you go. Well, yeah. anyway. So, Jeffrey. Yes. The title is called Just How Sweet is Jesus? Mm -hmm. And I said earlier that Jesus was not only sweet, he was also very determined. Mm -hmm. And um, he's not just the, the Lamb of God. He is the Lion of Judah for a reason. So what do you think of the word when you think of sweet? Do you think of Gandhi, maybe Mother Teresa? Um, you know, what about Jesus? Most artist renditions portray Jesus as the sweetest, nicest looking man on the block, usually accompanied by lambs or children. Jesus is the sweetest name I yeah. know. And how can he's I put, just the same. How can I put this? As no, a, no. As a male. Oh, I know. It's as hard. a male, I always kind of had, you know, a little cringeworthy moment whenever Jesus was referred to as sweet. We don't normally assign that label well, we to know men. That. No, that's true. Yeah. That's why a lot of praise and worship songs... Uh, some of them, and none, and even some of the earlier hymns mm -hmm. give a feminine face to Jesus, yeah. which is is not entirely wrong. No, uh, but no. at the same time, we got to understand that Jesus was a whole lot more than just being sweet. Oh, definitely. And so he could be quite aggressive, as we say. Right, and you know, and and here's the popular thing, of course, that we see is oh, we must pronounce that God is love, and you know, right. He's love and, and He's he sweet, is. and He is, and all very true. Um, and it even says in, in 1 Corinthians 13, it's described as patient, kind, not envious, not boastful, not rude, selfless, not easily angered, right. ungrudging. You know, sweet never shows up on that list, though. No. Did you notice that? Uh, quite, yes. But quite the word aware. kind, K-I-N-D, does. 
and which the, could be construed as sweet. Right. But yeah. the difference between sweetness and kindness is like the difference between tolerating and embracing like political correctness and and love and appearance and reality. I think we've fallen into a vat of craziness right now in our culture. Yeah, when Jesus uh, chased the money changers out of the temple, methinks he wasn't being real sweet <laughs> oh. and accommodating and kind. Right. I think he was rather upset. So uh, he would get this, um, you know, the rap, as they would say today. Jesus was not nice, necessarily, but he was kind, and yes. there's a way. And we've talked about this before. Yes. When you have to confront someone, right, and you have to do it in a way. You've often said to me that you've learned mm -hmm. a lot over your <laughs> <laughs> over your 66 years. Yes, your confrontation code back in the early. <laughs> 70s and 80s. I'd I would say, say I was more direct when I when I got to the confrontation stage. Yeah, it was more direct and aggressive. Or aggressive, say. right? And yeah. you would end. And up... there's a way to confront without doing that, right? Which can end up in a much po much more positive result for those involved. Yeah, yes. and the, I I watched you, Jeffrey. Okay. I watched how you would handle situations mm -hmm. where you there was confrontation needed. Mm -hmm. Or whatever, and I often have walked, and I walked away sometimes shaking my head because in the early days, it made it worse sometimes. And I'm not trying no. to be judgmental of no, you. I'm no, just saying, no, it, it's evident. But that is so not the case now. Oh shucks. No, I'm serious. If there's any confrontation needed at Man, maybe all, maybe the maybe the white-haired piano player grew. Yeah, well, I know where you're going. <laughs> I know where you're going, and these days, yes, you want you. If you're gonna confront the Duffields, you're better off confronting with me <laughs> than someone else, because well, as you have a, a matured, I don't want to say aged. No, well, you can say it. Go ahead, just say it. No, no, no. no. I am a little more. Your filter. I'm direct. Your filter has has had a I know, what has needed a reset me? button a little bit. A little more. bit. Yeah. Well, I I say to not myself, much, not we, much. We've had a couple of situations recently where I I kind of nudge him and say, "Go talk to him," <laughs> or "Go talk to her and help her," because I know if I go over there, I'm yes, going to rip her yes, a new one, yes, and you yes, aren't. Yes. And whatever happened? How did we change the roles? In I that? guess I guess maybe you oh. I rubbed off on you, and you yeah, rubbed well, off on me. That's a good thing. Yeah. Well, G Jesus touched the untouchables, and he told the disciples to let the children, you know, the little children, come to me. He ate meals with the rejects of society. Yep. And he declared, I have not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And especially to people who were sick or discouraged or beaten down or humbled. You know, if you were sick, discouraged and beaten down, would you want someone to give you a pat on the back and say, good luck, <laughs> hope it works out for you? No. Or would you want someone to hold you and love you and encourage you until you get back on your feet again? What do you think? Well, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. So if I'm really they honest. They call that kicking them when they're down. No, it's not it's a good thing. The modern vernacular. And that's not really the sweetness of Christ. I'll no. be honest with you. No. But if, if we are honest with ourselves, which we try to do on this podcast, we don't really want people to be just nice to us either. Nice or sweet is just what we settle for when we really want is for people to be kind to each other. Right. And so Jesus didn't care about sweetness. He cared about righteousness. Right. And exactly. so sweet people don't make enemies but Jesus did, and he made a lot of them because he cared about righteousness more than he, than he making and keeping friends. And for one thing, Jesus had no patience for unrepentant, greedy people who took advantage of others. Right. So we, we, this face that we see out here in the world, oh, let's just love everybody and let's just be inclusive in our, in our worship experience and let's, you know, don't offend anybody, don't say anything from the platform. What, we, what he, Jesus saw when he saw the money changers and the merchants selling animals in the temple courtyard, probably, you know, for exorbitant, unreasonable prices, I found out, um, he made a whip and drove them from the right. temple area and overturned their tables. That's in John chapter 2. Right. So this was not a fit of uncontrolled temper. However, Jesus didn't run through the courtyard screaming and flipping cages, which would have injured the animals inside. That's not what happened. Instead, Jesus was totally in control. 
He took the time to make a cord with which to herd the larger animals out of the courtyard, and he overturned money-changing tables and ordered the people to take their bird cages out so the birds would not be injured and barred them from coming back in to exploit the temple visitors. It's interesting. He didn't care that he was inconveniencing and offending people or messing up their business. They were the ones who were wrong for desecrating a holy space by daring to use their unsavory business practices on humble travelers who only wanted to worship God. I, I would have loved to have seen that. And he wasn't afraid to call them out and stop them. Jesus also had no patience for religious hypocrites. No, no. And he wasn't a mean person. There's a difference between someone standing up for what is right and proclaiming truth. And then there's a, then being a person that, just as mean and just, right. you know, just aggressive and angry. And Jesus was never that way. This is what it means when Jesus said he was, quote, mean, unquote. During his three and a half years of ministry, Jesus touched and healed social outcasts. He defended women who were being criticized by arrogant men, mm -hmm. and he raised the dead. But he also... <laughs> Should I dare say this? He pissed off a lot of people. Let's oh, just say it. Okay. Oh. So much so that they eventually killed him, Jeff. They yep. did. And so we tend to well, forget. Well, the ones that he angered, I'll be a little more diplomatic in my verbiage. <laughs> that was my jersey coming out. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I don't think. Well, anyway. He, <laughs> he, he angered them because he caught them in their dishonesty. In their manipulation. Yes. In, uh, in their taking advantage, if you will. He caught, the, he saw it, he, he recognized it, he caught them, and he called them out on it. And that happens even, even with piano players that are not as right. confrontive as That's they right. used to be. When you catch them in something, uh, as the saying says, a guilty conscience needs no accuser. That's right. And the person... Uh, that gets the most upset when confronted with an issue are usually the guilty ones. Right. So if, if, if our picture here of our hero, Jesus, if he gives us a, a picture of, quote, what it's like to be sweet, then we should also not be sweet like that. In other words, if Jesus had been sweet, no one would have crucified him. Right. But he also wouldn't have had any power to save humanity or change the world and the course of history. Those who followed him also had the same problem. All of Jesus' disciples were killed gruesomely for sticking to their principles against the flow of culture. And today, this is still the case. People who stand up for truth and hold on to their principles and confront wrongdoers must be prepared to face a backlash. In, no doubt. And while we sing the gospel... Let's just say it's not always pretty sometimes, and I will get, occasionally, I will get people that will question things that I've said or things that I've sung from the platform. Mm -hmm. So if you stick to righteousness at the expense of being sweet, be prepared to be insulted, mocked, demeaned, injured, threatened, and maybe even killed. So why not just stay sweet and keep your head down? Avoid all that messy stuff. That's what the world would say. Well, I'll say to you, it's also the key to failure. If you try to please everybody. No doubt. And if you don't stand for something, we've heard this before, you're going to fall for anything. And in this postmodern world where political correctness is king and everyone's truth is equally valid, no matter how contradictory, we have fewer and fewer people courageous enough to stand up and fight for what is right and just and true. And if this continues, we will fall as a nation. I, I've, I'm seeing it. Not just individuals, but entire groups in our entire society. Being sweet comes with a price. One cannot afford. It's impossible to be sweet all the time. To everyone, no matter what, we shouldn't even try. Let us not just be sweet. Let's be kind. And let us stand up for righteousness. And let's be like Jesus. This has been episode number 81, and thank you, Jeff, for your, your input, and that sweet tooth is powerful. I was going to say, I, <laughs> I'm, I think maybe I'm just going to go see where the damask, <laughs> damask box is. They're got in to. the car. Yeah. They're I in the car. So were. here's my call to action for all of our family out there that are listening today. If we really want to be like Jesus, 
We just can't settle for being sweet. We have to be kind and we have to lend a helping hand and we also have to call out when it's necessary be brave by standing up for righteousness you're going to be in a small club i'll be honest with you but what a club it is have a wonderful merry christmas episode 81 we'll see you next week